Hello and welcome to Virtualize Everything. Today we're going to be looking at installing Navidrone inside of a Proxmox environment. You can do this video either inside of a container or a VM. Those setup steps are going to be left for you and we're going to start out once we have our appliance running. So heading over to the Proxmox virtual environment, you can see that I've already created a container for this video. But the steps we're going to follow will work just the same if you've installed Ubuntu in a VM. So the first thing we're going to need to do do is start it up and I already have mine running. You're going to press start here and then we can access the console. Here at the login page we'll go ahead and log in. I'll be using root because it's the first login in a container. For a VM you may have to use your username. Once we're logged in we're going to go ahead and update and upgrade this container to make sure we have the latest versions available to us in the 24.04 LTS release of Ubuntu. We're going to do that with the command apt date and we'll add two amper stamp which tells Ubuntu that it's going to go ahead and do the next command in this process if the first one doesn't fail. So we'll run apt grade and then add the dash y. You should note that if you're inside of a VM you might be required to use sudo. So if you get an error message about permissions try putting sudo in front of the apt. Pressing enter the update and upgrade process of all of our software will take effect. I'll return to you when this process is finished. Okay, so now that the upgrade process has finished, we can go ahead and start installing some of the software we're going to need to get Docker running. We're going to be using a script today to install Docker. This is one of the only scenarios inside of this channel that will use a script. But I feel at this point, scripts are pretty standard throughout the home lab environment and that installing Docker is a pretty good use case for a script. So we're going to go ahead and use Carl, which we'll use to then pull down the script and execute the script that we'll use to install Docker. The command to install Carl is going to be apt install Carl y. So with Carl installed, we can download and install Docker. So let's go Carl dash lowercase s for silent mode. Although inside of Ubuntu, it's not purely silent. We will get some outputs. It will minimize the amount of output and uppercase s to tell Carl that we want to see any error messages that may occur during the process. And lastly, an uppercase L, which will tell Carl that if there's any redirects inside the URL for this script to go ahead and follow them. Then we're going to enter space https colon slash slash git dot docker dot com space a pipe delimiter and lastly the type of script we're going to execute which is going to be sh. We can press enter and docker will install. Now that we have docker installed the next step is going to be to create a few user accounts. The first one I'm going to create because we're inside of a container. This user account probably won't be necessary if you're inside of a VM, but if you are using root inside of a VM, you probably will want to create it as well. So we'll use the command here in Ubuntu of add user and then the username. We'll give it a password, answer all of the questions, tell it it's correct information, and then we're going to give this user sudo and docker user group. Now we're going to create a second user account called Navidrone. This user account doesn't have to be named Navidrone. Navidrone, it can be named something as simple as music or whatever you want. This user account is going to help us later on remove the root user permissions from our Docker container. We're going to have our Docker container run as though it's a member of this user account and not on the root layer. This is another layer of security when executing Docker, so it's suggested as best practices to do so. We'll once again give this user account a password, answer all of its questions and say yes. Now we want to note that Navidrone was created as 1001 with a user ID of 1001 as well. We're going to have to fill them out inside of our Docker container when we get there. The next thing I'm going to do is exit because I'm inside of a container and using the root user account and I'm going to go ahead and log in with that VE account that we created. Now inside of the container we can go ahead and now use sudo sudo passwd-l root to go ahead and remove the password from the root user account. You won't have to do this step if you're inside of a freshly installed VM as you're going to have a user account and root should already be disabled 
inside of that VM. Now let's go ahead and start by making a place to store all of our Navidrone files. And we're gonna do that with mkdir, and I'm gonna call this folder Navidrone. And then I like to press the up arrow to show the last command, delete the mkdir and enter cd to go ahead and move to that directory. We're gonna create a Docker compose file now that's going to allow us to execute Docker. So in order to do that, we'll do sudo nano docker dash pose dot yml. Here, we're gonna go ahead and paste this configuration file. And I've copied this configuration file directly from the Navidrone website and I've added a few different comments so this doesn't trip you up. The first thing we're going to want to modify is we want to remove the comment for user accounts that I've added so that we can use our user account that we just created. And we're gonna call this 1001, 1001, because that was the ID of the user account we created. The next thing we're gonna to want to do is make sure Navidrone has a place to store its data. So here for this line, let's go slash home, slash navidrone slash data. And we'll want to go ahead and remember that file path because in just a minute here, we're going to have to do some more editing to that file path to make sure Docker can go ahead and write to it. All right, so at this point, we have no music, so we don't need to worry about where we're installing or storing music, but we could edit that if we so chose. And what I would do to edit this is, again, I'm gonna put this at home, Navidrone, and then I'm gonna do music. The colon music is going to be the location inside of Docker, where the music is going to be mounted to the Docker container. And the added colon with RO means read only, so Docker will not be able to write to this music folder. At this point, we can go ahead, press Control X, Y, and Enter to save this file. And then we can use mkdir, add a path of home, navidrone, data, and create that data folder. Since we're outside of our user account, we also need to add sudo in front of this line. And then we can run sudo chmod so that we can modify the ownership of this folder. And then we're going to need to modify the ownership of this folder to go ahead and make sure that Navidrone can read and write from it. So we're going to do that with sudo ch own. We'll make this recursive so that it sets all the files inside of data to the same ownership with a dash r. And then we'll do 1001 colon 1001 and once again our file path home navidrome data and we'll go ahead and do the same thing for music it's not necessarily going to be necessary for music but it will go ahead and possibly make things easier down the road so let's just go ahead and do the same so we'll run mkdir to create the music folder and then we'll set those permissions of one 1001 recursively for everything inside of that folder. And we may have to come back later on to upload our music because I will use our VE account to upload all of that music to this folder, but it will be set to start the process. At this point, we've set all of our folders and all of our permissions for Navidrone, and we have a basic setup that we can go ahead and start. So we'll enter docker compose up and we're going to drop that dash d off here in order to make sure everything starts up. Now, if you want to log into your web interface first or during this session, we will want to go ahead and use an IPA to identify our IP address if we haven't set it as static. My IP address is going to be 192.168.14.2. Yours will differ. And I'm using DHCP, which isn't suggested for a server, but it makes the filming of these videos a little bit easier. Now entering Docker Compose and pressing Enter, Docker is going to go down or go out, pull down the Navidrone container, and start it up. If we don't get a string of error messages, we're in pretty good shape for the next step of this process. So the next step is to log into that web interface. By opening a new tab on our browser, we're going to enter that 192.168.14.2, and then we're going to enter 
enter a colon of 4533, which is going to be the port that we're going to communicate on, on through the web browser to Docker. And if you noticed during the configuration steps, that particular port was configured in the Docker configuration file. Now, NaviDrone wants us to set up our user account for our first login. And I'll just go ahead and I'll just go ahead and use VE and give it a generic password and create admin account. At this point, NaviDrone's set up, but there'll be no music in here. So we're going to want to go ahead and take a few steps to get some music. I'm going to first SSH into this container, and then I will exit my SSH and do an SCP, which is secure copy paste to get my music into this container. Your mileage may vary, but this is the way I like to do it. So we'll open Windows PowerShell like I have here. We're going to enter SSH. Then we're going to enter our user account and at symbol and the IP address 192.168.14.2 and press end. At this point, since this is a new container and Windows has never seen it, it's going to ask us if this fingerprint is okay. We enter yes, press enter, and the password for our user account. And we're in. So we'll enter exit and then we're going to enter SCP, the path to our music. I have a Alabama album that's on my desktop. So I'm just going to quickly copy it and then I'll hit the right key button to paste it inside of Windows PowerShell. If for some reason you had spaces, you want to make sure you put that file name that has spaces inside of quotes so that you don't confuse Linux. Now we're going to enter a space that VE at IP address of our folder, and then we're going to enter a colon and we're going to go home slash VE slash music just to give this a place to upload to. And then we'll hit enter, give it our password, and we're going to get an error message because I forgot to tell it that it was a folder we were uploading and not a file. So we'll go ahead, give it that slash R to tell it be recursive because it's a folder. Now I can enter our file name and the upload happened. So now that we have some music here for NaviDrone to work with, we can go ahead, close out our Windows PowerShell, go back to our Proxmox web interface where we have our console for our environment open. We're going to press W to end watch and control C to exit it. Now that we're back at the command line, what we can run in LS, we'll see our Docker compose. If we go CD dot dot and then run our LS, we'll see our newly created music folder. Now we can kind of explore our music folder by using LS and then entering music. And you can see that we have an album inside of that music, but it didn't title anything as Alabama. We're going to kind of just want to make a note of that because when we move this, we're going to want to make sure we move it correctly. If I again enter LS or if I hit up and then hit and use the LS music, we can add that slash paste that folder name and we can see all of our albums that we uploaded. So now to move this, we'll use sudo. We're going to do an MV. We'll tell it it's recursive. We'll say slash home slash ve slash music and then we're going to put a and then we're going to use a space and we're going to do slash home slash navidrone slash music slash Alabama because if you remember right our Alabama folder didn't come in and this time when we press enter well first we need to use a lowercase r I guess all right so we added no r for the move command so let's go ahead and just verify everything took effect first we'll run an ls inside of our ve user account and we notice that music is gone. Then we're going to use ls again, and we're going to browse to home slash navidrone slash music. We did get an error message, so we'll put sudo in front of that ls, and we see Alabama in here. Now, the one last thing is we may want to check that there is no odd folders inside of Alabama, so we will just again run Alabama, and you can see that we have our album track information. So, 
at this point, we're going to be good to open back up our Navi drone Docker folder inside of our own host. So we'll just CD to that like so, and then we can run Docker space hose up. And this time let's run our dash D, which means we're going to get no out. So it's going to go ahead, start up Navi drone and running Docker PS. We can see that we have Navi drone going and it's on port 4533. So going back to our Navi drone tab and hitting refresh, you can see that we now have our Alabama album imported into Navi drone. Now, one thing I would like to note is if we head back to the Proxmox web interface, we may or may not have to re-execute that ch own command on this folder and so if you go to your navi drone fold file or tab so if you go to your navi drone tab and for some reason nothing appears go ahead and re-execute that sudo ch own dash uppercase r 1001 colon 1001 home navi drone music command that we executed during the setup process of this original container and what that'll do is that'll change any ownership permissions for the music that you imported into your Navi drone user account using your VE user account. That'll make it so that the user of Navi drone that we applied to our Docker container can go ahead and read your music. So with that, we have Navi drone up and running and really my video tutorial is finished. I am going to go ahead and turn you to one last thing, which is environment variables. If you remember, they were all commented out in that configuration file we uploaded. Now, we're not going to need to use any environment variables to get this up and running, but if you'd like to further configure NaviDrone, say it's behind a web oxy, you want to use a different port, you want to maybe bind it only to certain IP addresses or things like that, there is an entire list of environment variables that are available to you inside of the NaviDrone documentation that I'll attach to the description section of this video. And here they are. One thing I might want to turn you to is this particular one, which stops your NaviDrone container from sending anonymous data back to the creators of Navi drone. So with that, I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. You're able to get Navi drone up and running. And as always, have a good night.